the Song of Solomon, chapter 2. It's right after Ecclesiastes. So, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. I'm starting on verse 1. The Lord laid this on my heart because the sweetness and the gentleness and the mercy and the kindness and the love of God, I think one of the biggest parts of the Bible which really talks about it and really speaks about it is the love that the Shulamite woman had for King Solomon. But really it's the love that Christ has for us in the Song of Solomon. And uh, in this chapter, the Lord just laid on me just the sweetness and the love and joy and gentleness of Jesus. I am the rose of sharing and the lily of the valleys. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. So, so stay with me, flagons. Comfort me with apples, for I am sick of love. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand does embrace me. I have a, I have a question for everyone here. Is he the lily of your valley? Is he the rose of Sharon for you? Is he that sweetness in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your, in the midst of your trouble? Because he can be that for you. More importantly, do you dwell in the sweetness of his presence? That's a good question for all of us here. And a question I ask myself, do we dwell in the sweetness of Christ's presence? Do we see that the sweetness of God touching our lives, that, it, that it, it spreads to other people, that it touches other people, we see the sweetness of Christ, the sweetness of God touching our lives, that you can, you can see it off of people's face. You can see that off of Jimmy Swagger, you can see it off of Gabriel, off of Donnie, off of all the professors here, that sweetness of Christ. It, it em emulates off their countenance. I'm saying it right. Emulates? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. And um, it just, when, being around them, you can see the love of Christ off of them. And it, it's it's strong, you know, and it's because, it's because what Jesus did for them, having that experience where changing their life constantly, just changing them from that old, that old being those old garments, taking off that old garments from you and putting on new clothes on you. Making you, instead of just a servant or, or someone else, he, he dresses you as a king, you know? And you can see that upon people who have been radically changed by Jesus. I have a question. Do you feel restlessness in your life? Do you have restlessness in your spirit? Do you feel restless here? You know? Maybe not all of you have that peace, that joy, that sweetness, that gentleness that God's trying to impart on you. He wants you to take part of that. And it's, it can be difficult, you know, growing up in such a tough environment, a tough world, and experiencing hardships and it might, maybe I don't really know a lot of hard, I've experienced hardships, but I can't really compare to other people. The only thing I can say is Christ experienced hardships on our behalf, and that's who we compare it to. Christ knows hardships, and he knows what you're going through. I have good news. Jesus is in our very midst right now. He's our comforter. He sent his Holy Spirit to comfort you right now. He's trying to comfort each and every one of you. He's trying to comfort you, Lewis, right now, where you're sitting right now. He's trying to comfort you and bring you peace in your life. You know, 
He's trying to give us rest. He wants to give us rest. But we have to desire it. We've got to want it in our lives. We've got to want that rest that's in Christ Jesus. Many of you may say you believe in the message of the cross, but do you have that rest that it brings? There's a difference. Not everyone that claims they know the message of the cross actually believes in it. To some people, it's just a good philosophy. It's just good works. To other people, they just were sent there by their parents, you know. Hopefully, hopefully they get a good impact, good lessons, and learn good, good things while they were here. But I'm here to tell you, whatever your reason for coming here, whatever the Lord was going to do with you, he has so much more for you. He has a calling on your life. Just you being here, He has a calling on your life. He wants to use you while you're here. I want you to dwell upon that tonight. Jesus, He's a gentle friend and a sweet, loving, and caring Father. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 says this, Thus saith the Lord, Stand you in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. The question is, according to that verse, what is our response to God asking us to seek the old paths? Is our response one of love, one of surrender? Or is it one of we will not walk therein? Because we want to do with our life what we want to do. We want to, you know, experience all, all the so-called happiness or joys that life has to offer. Well, let me tell you something. That world out there, it might give you joy for a little while, but when you start getting out there, it's going to destroy you. There's destruction waiting for you out there. Just the fact that, you, that the Lord called you here to this Bible college means that the devil wants to destroy you. God is crying out, seeing, saying, Seek ye the old paths. What is the old path? Well, the old path is when you're in Sunday school and you used to sing that song, Jesus Loves Me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. It points you to the cross. It's the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God in your life where you should have been killed or you should have been hurt or you should have been destroyed. Your reputation should have been destroyed. Your, your, everything about you should have been tarnished. It's the prayers with mom and dad as a child. That's the old past. Spending time with your family around the table, praying with them, enjoying the food with them, saying how blessed we are to have food on our table and clean water in our glasses. It's the sweet, gentle road that led you to Calvary. Each and every one of you is unique and created with a purpose. Jesus has his arms open wide, and he says, Come, come to me. Come, and I'll give you rest. He says, I want to give you all. I want to give you everything. Just come to me. Give your all and come now. You see, that old path has always been there. It's always been calling you home. The old path points to Jesus and his blood. It says, I'll never let you go as long as you hold on to me with all your might. Jesus doesn't just want you to be a servant. He wants you to be his friend his brother, his son.
I want to be living in the sweetness of Christ. That's what we need today. You know, we can preach the cross all we want, but unless we have the love of, the, of Jesus in our hearts, the sweetness of Jesus, then what is the cross? We'll forget what the cross is while we're trying to beat someone over the head, trying to tell them, well, we, we got to live by these set of rules. We got we to gotta, we gotta work hard to, to follow Jesus with all our life. But if you don't have the love, you're not going to reach anybody. Um, I just want to end here. I believe that there's the Lord is calling someone in this room. <clears throat> I don't know who it is. You know, maybe the Lord's been dealing with you. Maybe the Lord want, knows what He can do with you. He can take. He can bring you through a whole lot. And I just, I just want you to come up here, and, or just sit where you're at. And raise your hands. You know. Um, the Lord wants to bless you. He wants He wants to He wants you to surrender. And I think that's what I'm getting at. He He wants you to surrender to Him. He wants you to to surrender and and rededicate your life and to give more than you've been giving. To experience that sweetness that you've seen from so many elders in the church, from so many friends, and so many other Christian brothers and sisters. He wants you to experience that and be a part of that.